Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How are you today? Fine. I believe by the grace of God, it is well with you. My prayer for you this morning is that it will continue to be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. You will live a fulfilled life. Amen. And by the grace of God, we shall make heaven together in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome you to our morning prayer. Thank you for joining us. And I'm very sure the Lord is going to bless you. You are not going to remain the same thing. Amen. No one has ever joined us and not blessed and not been a better person. You today is your turn. Let us bow down our head as we pray together. Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We want to thank you for the privilege to come at your feet, to be blessed, to be made better, to prepare us for your kingdom. As we go into your world and as we pray, Holy Spirit, you will guide, lead us, take charge of everything in Jesus' name. Bless every listener, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Give me better. Amen. God bless you. This morning, you know, you remember where we have been, what we have been considering for some time now. That is Psalm 5. And that is what we want to consider this morning before we pray. And please open your Bible now to Psalm 5. We have considered verse 1, verse 2. We are now in verse 3. But we are going to take verse 2 and verse 3 together. Verse what? Verse 2 and verse 3 together. We have been talking about morning prayer. This morning also we want to pray. Uh, we will still want to consider that morning prayer in verse 2. I came unto the voice of my cry. That was what we considered yesterday. The cry of the saints. The cry of the children of God. And one thing and the testimony is that any time a child of God sincerely pray and cry to God, God will definitely respond. And I told you yesterday that God will answer your prayer. God will wipe away the tears from your eyes. The Lord of comfort will comfort you. I don't know what you are passing through. I don't know the situation you are in. It may be personal. It may be family. It may be a community challenges or a national problem. But one thing is very sure that when we pray, God will definitely do something. And today also, we we'll consider this passage again. We we'll continue in this passage again. Hacking unto my voice, I pray God will answer. We hacking unto your cry. Amen. My King, do you see there? And my God, that is it. That is the person is praying to. But whom are some people are praying to wolves? Some people are praying to. A man, guru, or whatever they call them. Some people are praying to, you know, praying to deities. They're praying to some idol. They're praying to some personality, to some demons, to some principalities, to some powers. But for these psalmists, King David is a my king. He is a king. He acknowledged the kingship of God. My God, my creator, my savior. Do you see? That is the source of his strength. That is the source of his prayer. That is the person he prayed to. Whom are you praying to? In the morning when you wake up, you make the oblation. Is it to God or to demon, to your father's gods? We must respect God. It's God only that we should serve. God said we should not put any other person. We should not put any other thing. He's a jealousy God. He's told us that is the first commandment that him only should we serve. If you are serving another personality, another personality, you should stop it because it's a terrible, damnable sin. And I pray as you call upon God, God will have mercy on you. That may be the way you have been shown. That may be the way you have known. And cleverly today also, they are bringing idol worship into the church. They may, they may, there are some that are bowing down to some images. It's sin. 
there are some who are bound down to the picture of their uh, of their uh, religious group is seen. There are some people who bow down to even human beings. I don't say you shouldn't respect your pastor, but when it comes to you now worshiping them, that is sin. Is sin. Now look at him again. He said, My voice. That is now in verse 3. My voice shall thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And I will look up. Do you see that? My prayer. Do you pray? I ask you again. Do you pray? If I say prayer, some, some people say, well, I pray. But you will understand what I mean by prayer later. When I pray, when I mean prayer, that means, do you commit your life into the hand of your creator, your God? Do you sincerely pray? You see, we miss it out many times. We miss it out many times because the way we pray, there are problems. We miss it many times because. The way we pray, we pray amiss. We miss it many times because we do not know how to really pray as we ought to pray. Now, when we pray, that means we acknowledge God. And that is what we must do. Look at him. He said, in the morning, that's the first thing. God should be the first in our life. The first thing is prayer. The first thing, the first thing you should do in the morning is you should, you should pray. The first thing before you do any other thing, acknowledge him. And let me cancel you. You see, when you pray, when you commit your ways into his hand, he directs you. He keeps you. He protects you. He guides you in everything. When you do not pray, that means you can do it your own. He leaves you on your own. That is why many people fail in the morning. The first thing is not to be nagging, it's not to quarrel with your husband, it's not to ask for money, it's not to go and you know, uh, disturb your dad or your mom. The first thing is to you kneel down, you acknowledge him. In the morning, let God hear your voice. Acknowledge him, appreciate him, give thanks to him for preserving you. Before you take any step, you want to, you, are you going for a journey? Or you want to write an exam? or you are going for an interview, anything you want to do, acknowledge him first. Let him be number one. Get him informed. Ask for his assistance. Ask for his backing. Ask for his you know, protection. Ask him for everything you want to ask him. Always acknowledge God. That is it. And you see here, my voice. Let go hear your voice. I pray God will hear your voice. I said, I pray God will hear your voice. Amen. God will hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. My voice shall thou hear in the morning. O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And I will look up. That means it's depending on God. Like the servants will always look up to their master. The children will always look up to their parent. The same thing is say, I will look up. I'm trusting you. I'm depending on you. I will look up for your guidance. I will look up for your supply. This is a king now. He's not a poor man. He's not a wretched man. He's in charge. He's in control. He's a ruler. He has everything. He has wealth. He has name. He has power. He has everything. But... It depends on God. We should learn from that. No matter your position, no matter any what, whoever you may be, depend on God for everything, and the Lord will be with you. Amen. Pray. Learn how to commit your ways into His hand, and I'm telling you. The Lord will keep you by His mighty power in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's see what. Paul told the pastor 
uh, uh, Pastor Timothy, this uh, spiritual young pastor, he told him the secret. Let's go now. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. I take verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all, do you hear that? I exhort you, I encourage you, first of all, what do you see there? Supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. The first thing, first of all, pastor, don't forget that. Deacon, deaconess, don't forget that. Workers in the church, don't forget that. Members of the church, don't forget that. Those of you who are young men and women, don't forget that. Those of you depend on the law for everything, don't forget that. Look at it. First of all, the first thing is prayer. Make sure prayer is the first thing in your life. And when we are talking about prayer, let's see Ephesians chapter 6. Here we see prayer in another form. In Ephesians chapter 6, look at verse 18. Are you there? I'm waiting for you. Yes, good. Verse 18 now. Praying always. You see there again. It's the same prayer we are talking about. You see, that a king said in the morning, the first thing here, the believers are encouraged. Here, you know, the apostles have been talking about warfare, spiritual warfare. He's telling them in spiritual warfare, prayer here is regarded as what? As a weapon. Weapon to overcome your enemies. Weapon for God to fight for you. For God to take charge of everything. Weapon that the enemy can never face. Is a weapon that you engage God with your enemies. And surely, you know, when God takes over the battles of your life, victory is very sure for you. Can I hear amen at your end now? Mm -hmm. Now, praying always. This is now the apostle telling them. That means this is what you should continue to do. You remember Jesus Christ in the book of Luke chapter 18. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Don't forget that. Always, before you go out in the morning, make sure you pray. Before you take any step, make sure you pray. And Paul also, when he was talking to the Thessalonian church in chapter 5, verse 17, he said, pray without ceasing. Now he's talking now to the uh, Ephesian church there. He's talking to them now. He said, pray always. Some people, they pray. After some time, they give up. Some people, they pray. But they don't believe. They don't pray with all their heart. Let's, let's read more of this passage. We are going to learn a lot of things from this passage. Pray always with all prayer. All prayer. All prayer. It may be silent prayer. It may be collective prayer. It may be family devotion. It may be, it may be church. It may be you know, national prayer. All prayers. All prayers. That means we have categories of prayer. And at times we may classify them into praying, you know, you know thanksgiving may be in our prayer. Praise and worship may be part of our prayer. We petition can be part of our prayer too. Praying with all prayer. About fasting, we can add it to our prayer to make it very strong and dynamic. We can also, it may be the prayer of confession. It's a type of prayer. It may also be the prayer of intercession. All these are kinds of prayer. And by the grace of God, from next week, we are going to take them one after the other. And that is what we are going to occupy ourselves with by the grace of God next week. Let's go back there again. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Don't forget. Don't pray carnally. Don't pray without, you know, making sure that you are in the spirit. Being born again, fine. Don't stay there. Move to the next level spiritually. Make sure you are sanctified. Have you been sanctified? Don't stay there. Make sure you are growing spiritually. Be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. When you are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, you enjoy your spiritual life better. 
And when you are praying, you pray in the spirit. You, you allow the Holy Ghost to take charge. You allow him to envelop you. Is the prayer that you pray with all your heart. You pray sincerely. You pray with all your mind. Not that you are praying, your heart is diverted. No. Not that you are praying, you are in the kitchen. Though you are kneeling down there, your mind is in the kitchen. Because you know time has gone. And you are going to the place of work. Not that you are praying as a student, you are in the biological class. Or biology class, whatever you call it. Or this one or that one. No. When you are praying, your heart... Even when you are praying in the spirit, it go. The Holy Ghost take charge. You pray fervently. That is the type of prayer we should be praying. Not carnal prayer. Not prayer of vengeance. Not prayer that God will not answer. There are a lot of prayer that God will not answer. Prayer with sin. Prayer with hatred. Prayer with malice. God will not answer. Prayer with bitterness in your heart against your husband, against your wife, against your parents. Prayer that of, you know, prayer, bitter prayer against your enemies that God should kill them. Even your mom. You pray seriously that it is better than for this your wife to even die. You fast and pray that your wife should die. You are a wicked man. Repent. God will not answer such prayers. It's true your wife is having some challenges or your husband is having some challenges. Don't pray that they should die. Why don't you pray that God should heal them? That God should have mercy. Your husband may be wicked. Your wife may be wicked. Your parents may be wicked. Don't pray any negative prayer. Don't pray the prayer God will not. God even told us. Let me give you this assignment. Go and read the book of Isaiah chapter 58. You will see it there very clearly. They fasted, they prayed, but God didn't answer because their prayer was against his will. If you pray against the will of God, God will not answer you. The prayer of die, 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 die. God knows how to handle your enemies. Don't be praying negative prayer. It's true. Let me tell you, if the Holy Ghost leads you to pray fervently and your enemy didn't repent, God knows how to handle them. He will deal with them. They are not the one who will tell him what to do. The own is to seek his face and supplicate. Make your petition. See how, you know, we see all those things one after the other. I pray the Lord will teach us how to pray. Amen. And by the grace of God, we will pray in the Spirit. Can I hear? Amen. Amen. Let's take it again. Pray always. Don't forget. When you are discouraged, pray. When you don't have food to eat, pray. When you don't have job, pray. You have married children has not come, pray. They are persecuting you, pray. You have challenges in the place of work, pray. You have problems with your studies, pray. Always. Always. Don't give up. This one thing I've discovered in the church. I discovered this in the prayer houses too. People call. You see them, but they are not patient. They want it now, now, now. God give it me. God give me. God give me. God give me. And their prayer is, you. most of our prayer are selfish prayers. Me, me, me is too much in our prayers. They pray. They will not patiently wait. Like that woman in the book of uh, Luke chapter 18. Do you see that woman? Do you see that woman who reported the case of the demonic daughter? Despite all that Jesus told her, she was not this. She patiently waited. And she got the answer. Uh, many people will not wait. They go to this prayer house, they go to that prayer house, they go to that pastor, they pray, ah, they say, Pastor, I've heard about you. I want you to pray for me, pray for me. And some of them will not want to do what God is telling them to do. They will don't want to correct their lifestyle. They keep malice. They fight. They quarrel. They do a lot of things. Instead of them obeying God, they are not obeying the word of God. Don't pray that prayer. God will not answer patiently with Pray always with all prayer. You have applied one, take the other one. 
You have applied another. Take another one again. You see that woman? She kept on going to the judge. She kept on going to the judge. That judge was not a righteous judge, ungodly man. That because she will never give up. That is you. Don't give up. Can I hear amen at your end? Amen. I say, don't give up. God still answers prayer today. If you pray, God will answer your prayer. And I pray for you that you patiently wait till the answer comes in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go back again. Praying always with all prayer, all prayers. All prayers. Supplication. That is, is also similar to you know a petition. Pray it. Keep on praying it. Keep on telling God. Intercession. Apply it. Put everything together. Add fasting to it. Stay there. Wait patiently. See it. Let's finish that prayer. And supplication in the spirit. Don't pray carnally. I've told you that one. And watching. Keep watching. As you are praying, watch. Many people only pray, but they don't watch. Watch. Why is this prayer not answered? Why is the delay? Watch. After praying, watch. Because trial, temptation will come. Watch. Be very watchful. Be wise. Jesus Christ told us that we should be watchful so that we will not fall into temptation. Watch and pray. They go together. The two go. They walk together. Don't take one. The two they go together, and there unto with all perseverance, keep it all. Continue. That is it. Continue. Persevere. Persevere. Continue. Don't give up. And by the grace of God, you will share testimony. And I hear better amen at your end there. The Holy Ghost will strengthen you to pray. Amen. And when you pray, answer will come. Amen. When you trust God, I'm telling you, go and check all those who pray in the Bible. Go and check them. Starting from Abraham, our father in the faith. God answered. You remember the children of Israel in the land of Egypt? They prayed. When they were in a terrible problem, they were all of them were in captivity. All of them, they prayed. What happened? God acting. God answered their prayer. God will definitely answer your prayer. Amen. I don't know your petition. Maybe there is delay. Maybe there was delay in the marriage of Isaac. Isaac prayed. He entreated the Lord, and the Lord was entreated of him. God answered the prayer and Rebecca gave back. Oh, it's your turn. Don't say because of that you want to quit the marriage. It's a coward that quits marriage because of uh, it's, it's you. You better pray. Answer we call. Don't quit the marriage. You have married, you have married. Thank God for that. Enjoy it. Persevere. Answer we call. Jabesh prayed. When she discovered that this is, this is not how my life should be. You also, you should know how your life is supposed to be. If your life, you are discovering that your life, you are, you know, this is not how things are supposed to work. It is prayer. It is not complaining. It is not more money. Who fight your mom? Who fight your parents? Stop asking questions from mom. At times she may give you the answer. At times she may not tell you the whole truth. But when you pray, the Holy Ghost will reveal the whole truth to you. Jabesh prayed. His destiny changed for the better. It is your turn. God will answer your prayer. Amen. How about that woman? Your daughter has challenges of demonic, demonic affliction. She went to the Lord Jesus Christ. She said, Lord, have mercy on my daughter. She said, no, 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 I'm not for you. See how she patiently, with wisdom, how I pray God will give us wisdom. Amen. God will give us wisdom. Amen. Even if everything is looking as if God is not going to answer you. Look, let me tell you, 
God will change his mind because of Jesus and because of you. Mm -hmm. He will say, because of Calvary, I will answer this, my daughter. Mm -hmm. That's why when you are going there, you go with humility. Pray with humility. And at the end of the day, what happened? The daughter was delivered. You also will be delivered. Mm -hmm. Your daughter will be delivered. Mm -hmm. Your husband will be delivered. Mm -hmm. God will answer your prayer. Pray with all prayers. You are praying, have you prayed? Add fasting to eat. And I'm telling you, go and check those people add fasting to eat their prayer in the Bible. Answer came speedily. It's not the fasting per se. They did it according to the word of God. That was why the answer came. And if you also apply it scripturally, according to the scriptures, I'm telling you, answer will come. Mm -hmm. I said, answer will come. Mm -hmm. What is your petition this morning? But one thing I know, that if we pray and we make God number one, we acknowledge him, success will be yours in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend some time now, we're going to pray and tell the Lord, I want you to commit yourself and number one, we are going to tell the Holy Ghost to teach us how to pray. In the book of Romans, he said, we do not know how to pray, but the Holy Ghost teaches us how to pray. So we are going to tell the Holy Ghost, number one, teach me how to pray. I want to pray in the Spirit. I don't want to just be praying for praying's sake. I want to be praying the prayer that we get answer. I want to pray to get answer, not just praying. Prayer that will bring answer speedily, and by the grace of God, answer will call. I say your answer will call, Amen. and God will answer your prayer. You will share testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you there this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and commit our ways into His hands and appreciate Him once again for the privilege He has given to us to come before His throne. For what you have taught us this morning, let's bless the name of the Lord. I want you to pray. Tell the Lord and thank Him this morning. Thank Him, praise Him, worship Him, magnify His holy name for the privilege He has given to us to call upon His name this morning. Open your mouth and start to pray now. Start to bless the name of the Lord. Thank Him, thank Him. Yes, acknowledge Him. Say, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I worship you. I magnify you. I give all the thanks to you. I give all the praises to you. Just bless the name of the Lord. Just magnify his holy name. Just thank him because he's good and his mercy endureth forever. Let's, ac let's, let's acknowledge him and thank him for this morning again. David said, In the morning, God will hear his voice. And that is how every morning, that is the same thing. Let everyone know that when you wake up in the morning like this, your voice will be heard. You wake up, the first thing is God, I thank you. The first thing is to acknowledge God. Father, help me to acknowledge you in all my ways, in all my days. Help me. To always depend on you in everything. To depend on you. Pray that prayer very well. That God will help you. That you will, you will depend on him. And I'm telling you, my brethren, when you put God first, he will take charge. He will take control. Don't forget that. And pray. Make sure you are praying according to the Bible, according to the scriptures. Do not pray carnally. Do not say this is how they pray it. Don't bring strange things. You want to pray to God, you didn't need candle. You want to pray to God, you didn't need anything. You don't need any perfume. You don't need any incense. You didn't need any oil. You want to pray to God. Jesus has finished everything for us on the cross. You didn't need to bow down to any image. It is sin. God will not answer such prayers. 
Don't let them introduce you to strange things that Jesus didn't teach you. Anything that Jesus Christ didn't ask us to do, the apostle didn't ask us to do, we shouldn't do them. Anything that contradicts the Bible, never you practice it. Don't include it in your prayer. Don't put incense there. You didn't need any incense. Jesus Christ didn't say you should add incense. He only taught us how to pray our Father who art in heaven. He didn't say put water. He didn't say put incense. He didn't say put perfume. He didn't say you should put any oil. Pray as Jesus Christ have taught you to pray. The apostle, he told, pray without ceasing. He didn't tell us to add anything to our prayer. He didn't say we should put, a, you know, draw some things and stay at the middle of that thing. No, these are occultic practices. These are idolatrous practices. Don't bring them in. Don't bow down to any, any what so called, uh, maybe images or cross. Don't bow down to those things. It's an abomination. Remo if you have been doing that, remove them from your ways of praying. Pray with your heart. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Make sure you are praying in the Spirit. You are praying, you are thinking, you are praying, your mind is not there. Change that method. Make sure you focus. Make sure you are praying with all your heart. Heartfelt prayer. With all your... That was how Anna prayed. Answer came. That was how saints of old prayed. Answer came. With all their heart. Go and read the book of Daniel chapter 9, 10 and 11 and 12. Go and read Nehemiah. See how they prayed there. Go and read Esther. See how they prayed and see out of the apostles, chapter 3, chapter 4. See how they prayed. Chapter 10, see how they prayed. And let's learn how to pray like them. Don't introduce anything that is not of God in your prayers. Don't introduce anything that will not glorify God. Make sure you pray with all your heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can I hear better, better, amen? Amen. I want you to write out the things you want God to do for you. The things you want God to do for you, write them down. You remember what the psalmist told us. Let's go back there again. You see him depending on God for all things. He depends on only God. Look at that verse 2 and that verse 3. You will see him there depending only on God. You will too, we should depend only on God. Not that after you finish prayer, you went to go and look for another man in the village. This is weekend. He you know, told you about one woman in Oshubu. Another person again in another place. Stop that. Depend on God. Don't add any other thing to it. Look at him. He said, Hacking unto my voice, unto my cry, my king and my God. Unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. After prayer, you trust God. You depend on him, waiting for the answer to call. Praying always. Praying in the spirit. That is the prayer you are going to pray now. Write down all those things you want, that Lord... This is what I want. I'm looking up unto you for the answer to all this, my request. Write them down. Write them down. Is it personal? Is it family issue? Is it concerning your academics? Or concerning your, your profession? Or concerning your farm? Maybe you are CEO there. You are the owner of your company. 
What do you exactly, what do you want God to do for you? Write them down. That was exact. You see, Jadbish analyzed everything. You can see all his requests. If you go to Anna, you see the request of Anna. She analyzed everything. Just give me one son. Just one boy. And I will dedicate him completely to you. And she prayed with bitterness of heart. And the answer came. You also go with answer. As long as you pray according to the scripture, write them down. Now, let us pray. We are going to look up unto God concerning this, your request. And God will answer your prayer. God will do it. Is it a project? What are you planning? God will do pray. You just depend on God. And Jesus Christ said, whatsoever we ask, he will answer. Don't forget this thing. Don't forget what I want to share with you now. Jesus Christ told us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This other thing you have written down now will be added. Is your name in the book of life? That is number one thing. If you die today, where will you spend eternity? Are you going to heaven or where? If there is sin in your life, why don't you get rid of sin first? Before any other thing. Bow down your head now. Tell the Lord. If you are a sinner, tell God to have mercy on you. Anybody keeping malice is a sinner. Bitterness, unforgiven spirit, these are signal of a sinner. Tell God to forgive you. And stop all this malice. And stop keeping all this, you know, bitterness in your heart. These things will kill you prematurely. Tell God to forgive you and remove it from your heart. To love your wife, to love your husband, to love your children, to love your neighbor as yourself. And give, tell God to give you grace to live above sin. Don't die in sin so that you will not perish. Jesus Christ came to this world to save the sinner. Tell him, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me. And if you have been praying through any other means, through the cross, through the picture, through images, tell God to forgive you. It's in that prayer. God will not answer such prayers. I want God to answer your prayer. That's why I'm telling you all these things now. Remove sin. Remove idolatry. Remove all this oil. Remove all this um, um, incense. Remove all these um, other things that you are putting into it. It's in that prayer. God didn't need them again. Jesus has finished it, everything for you on the cross. Tell God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Have you done that? I can assure you. Invite Jesus to come into your heart after washing you by his blood. Washing your heart, cleansing you, purifying you. Remove malice, remove bitterness, remove all those bad, bad habits from your life. Now you can now pray. Now you cannot put your petition, Lord, this is what I want. Tell him everything. Don't be ashamed. Tell him everything. Tell him everything. The Lord will do it. The Lord will answer your prayer. You will share, definitely share testimony. God will do it for you. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are telling God everything this morning. Make sure you are sharing your mind to him. Tell him everything, everything. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. Tell him, believe. Believe. Jesus Christ told that man, only believe. He said, all things are possible to him that believe it. Only believe. The same thing I'm telling you this morning. Only believe. If you believe, all things are possible to him or she that believe it. And God will definitely do it. Are you there? Don't be tired. God will do it. And make sure you pray in the spirit. Give God all the attention during the time of your prayer. Pray with all your heart. Pray fervently. You know, I showed you the secret sometimes ago. If you have not forgotten. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. We see Jeremiah chapter 29 now. Verse from verse 11 down. I know the thought that I think towards you says the Lord, the thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then ye shall call upon me. That is in prayer. 
and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. God has assured you of his answer, that he will answer you. Look at, how are you going to pray that prayer in verse 12? Then shall he call upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, verse 13, and he shall seek me, that is in prayer, and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart, that is praying in the spirit with all your heart. I will be found of you, says the Lord. I will, I will turn away your captivity. And God assured answer. Pray with all your heart. Pray in the spirit. God will definitely answer. I pray this morning, God grant your petition in Jesus' name. Can I hear better? Amen. Amen. He has done it. Just believe. Continue to thank him that he has done it for you. I know it is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are going to pray for the needs of some people today. There are some people who are in terrible financial need. We talk about poverty. They are living even below poverty level. Things are hard. Things are harsh. We want to pray. Lord, remember the masses, the poor masses, especially in Africa, in Asia, in Southern America, in the Caribbean. Let's pray for them that God will remember these poor masses all over the world. Shall we pray? Let's pray. The children, the youth, the adults, the widow, the widowers, the orphan. Let's pray that the Lord will remember them. Father, we pray for these masses, poor masses in Africa, in Asia, in the Caribbean, all these poor masses. Father, Lord, all over the world, remember them, Father. Remember them, Lord. Remember them, Lord. Remember them, Lord. Send help, O oh Lord, to these poor people in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Can we hear? Let me hear your better amen there. Amen. There are some factors that are responsible for all this. We want to pray. If it is a climate factor, if it is the government factor, if it is some individual, you know, this um, uh, uh, drug pushers or whoever, every power that is behind this problem, let's pray that God will touch them and change them, that this problem will be solved in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Whatever may be the causes of this problem, of our problem, environmental or climatic you know, changes that is causing the problem, you know, uh, famine and all the rest, let's pray. Mismanagement of the governments, let's pray that God will touch those who are involved that this problem will be solved. Shall we pray? Father, whatever may be the source of this problem, is it climatic change? Is it the government? Is it some agencies or drug pushers? Or one man or the other, any, any group of people, the big, big people or the rich men of the world that are trying to make life difficult for his colleagues, oh Lord, you will touch our rulers that they will amend everything that needs to be amended so that life will not be difficult for the masses in the name of Jesus. Touch our leaders, Lord, to do the right thing. Put your fear in their heart, Lord. I know you have answered. Blessed be thy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. There are some also who are sick. There are some who are having terminal diseases. There are some they are sick, no care, nothing. We want to pray that God also will remember them and send help to them. By his stripes, we were healed. Let's pray. God, send help. Those who have cancer, those who have one tumor or the other, those who have one problem or the other. They, you know, we have different types of sickness, infirmities all over the world. Let's pray that the Lord will have mercy on the sick people right now. 
the one in the hospital, the one at home, the one wandering about in the streets, let's pray that God will send help to them. God will touch them. God will heal them. God will restore back their health in the name of Jesus. Father, we are praying for the less privileged, those who cannot even take care of their health, Father, those who are poor and wretched and sick as well. There are some, they have money, but they are sick. Oh Lord, send help, oh Lord. Whether they are in the hospital, whether they are in one place, oh Lord, remember them, touch them, heal them, deliver them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for having answered our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Give me better. Amen. There is other things, brethren. There are men, there are solutions. The people are not taken to that solution. The enemy doesn't allow them to have understanding. You see, the gospel gives solution to all problems of life. We want to pray that God will back up all his words. As our pastors, as our leaders, We'll be preaching the gospel. God will back up the gospel with signs and with wonders. And when people hear the gospel, let God. We want to pray that God will give them understanding. They will, the, the gospel will open their eyes. The gospel will turn them from darkness to light. The gospel will turn them from Satan to God. Let's pray. This is the only permanent solution eternal solution to the problem of mankind. <clears throat> Let us pray that uh, this gospel is being preached to people in Africa. God will give them understanding in Asia, in the Caribbean, in the Asian world, all over the world. Let's pray that God will touch life. God will change life so that they can get permanent solution <clears throat> to all their problems. Let us pray for them. Gospel, as it's been shared through the social media, the gospel has been shared in the radio, television. The gospel has been shared in giving out of you know pamphlet or tracts. As it been shared, let's go, oh Lord, open the eyes of our people. Let this gospel open their eyes. Let this gospel turn them from darkness to light. Let this gospel. Oh Lord, turn them from Satan to our God. Let's pray that this gospel will open their eyes to the finished work on the cross and they will apply the blood for cleansing that we, they will have inheritance with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray for them. Let's pray that God will use this gospel to deliver the people from darkness. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Brethren, let's still pray. You see, many people are going to the church, but their life has not changed for the better. They have not been born again. They are just going to church. Multitude, multitude. They are going to church. Let's pray. This is weekend. Tomorrow is another Sunday. We want to pray. As many who are going to gospel, whether gospel churches or you know, normal churches, we want to pray for their salvation. They will not just be going there. The word of God will transform their life. The word of God will change their life. All of us who will live according to the word of God. We will not just be going to church for going sake. There will be a transformation of life through the gospel we are hearing. Open your mouth and pray. If you also you are there, you are just going to church, your life has not changed. This is the time for you to repent. It's good to go to church, but that is not enough. God told the Israelites, it's true, you are coming to me, your life is full of sin. We want to pray that our churches, the churches we are going, we bring transformation. We make our life better, make our family better, make our world better. Not just going to church. Let us pray. Lord, let your words Miss with faith with our heart. Miss with faith in the heart of our children. Miss with faith in the heart of our husbands and wives. That your word will make us better. Your word will draw us closer and prepare us for your kingdom. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Mm -hmm. Can I hear better? Amen. Mm -hmm. With this prayer also, we are still going to pray, especially for our children and our youth. Many of our children and youth, they're just following daddy and mommy to the church. But their life is quite different. They feel that they are being deprived. They don't have liberty. That's why many of them, immediately they get to campus, you see their true color. We want to pray for genuine conversion of our children and our youth. That they will not just be following us to church, but they will be a true change of life. A life of Christ, indeed, in the life of our children. Let us pray for our children. Let's pray for our youth. The ones in the church now, let's pray for them that they will not just be coming to church to satisfy their father and their mother. They will have true relationship with God. True relationship with God. Real transformation of life. They will know the God of Israel. They will follow God. They will not just satisfy their parents. When they become adults, you see them, they don't go to church again. Instead of going to church, they go to Babish. Instead of going to church, they go to clubhouses because they have never at any time have relationship with God. But when they are genuinely born again, truly born again, you will see them after leaving their parents, they will continue. Let's pray. Those who have known the Lord among them, let's pray that God will keep them. Those who have not yet known the Lord, the Lord will save them. Let us pray for our children. We shall be saved with our household. Our children will not be wasted away. We will not lose any of our children in the kingdom of God. Let's sincerely pray for our children. They will not just be following us. There will be a true change in the life of our children. Our children will serve God with sincerity. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This weekend, some of you are traveling. Why don't you commit yourself into the hand of God for joining mercy? What are your engagements this weekend? Is it for marriage or you are going for one thing or the other? Why don't you commit your ways into the hand of God and tell God exactly what you want him to do for you this weekend? Pray for yourself now. Commit your family. Commit yourself and commit everything into the hand of God. Let us pray. Make sure you are praying now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining mercy. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are going to for a project. Pray. Commit your ways into the hand of God. In the morning, will you hear my prayer, O Lord? And I will look up. As we pray this morning, let's look up. Let's trust God for supply. Let's trust God for his protection. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's tell him for his guidance. Tell him, Lord, I depend on you. Guide me. Lead me. I don't want to make any mistake. Don't forget your family. Let there be peace. Lord, I want peace in my home. Peace in my family. I want your presence in my family. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this morning. You are great. You are mighty. Truly, like King David said, you are our king. You are our God. Unto you we will look up unto. Because we depend, we trust you. Just like David has encouraged us in the morning, we should make you first in everything. That's why we have come this morning, Lord. And we have committed ourselves. We have prayed for ourselves. We have prayed for our family. We have prayed for others. Lord, answer our prayer speedily in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The masses suffering all over the world, remember them in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for the sick all over. Lord, touch them one by one. Heal them in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Our own personal need, we have prayed for our children. As many of them that have not yet known you, you will have mercy on them. Save them in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Children, you that are coming to church, men and women coming to church without salvation, have mercy on them. Give them understanding. Turn them from darkness to light. Turn them from Satan to you living God. So that after this world, none of us will miss your kingdom in Jesus' name. 
We have committed our ways into your hand this weekend as your children are traveling from one place to another. They are going for one engagement. They are going for one project. They are going for one, uh, you know, one thing or the other. Lord, let your presence go with all of us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Any weakness there, any sickness there, any infirmity there, any affliction there, remove them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your presence go with us. Amen. Guide and lead us in all ways. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Glory be to your holy name. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can I hear better amen at your end over there? Thank you joining us this morning. God bless you. I wish you a very wonderful, happy weekend. And then don't forget, on Monday we are starting, we'll continue in this uh, prayer series. And then we are going to take them one after the other. We'll start with a prayer of thanksgiving. And then it's going to be a wonderful time. We are going to see examples from the scriptures. And I'm telling you, when we apply this praying with all prayers, you have testimony to share. You will understand prayer more. And when you are praying this time, you have, you know, I've told you, praying with all prayer in the spirit. Your, your prayer life is going to change. I'm telling you. And this time you will enjoy prayer. And the Lord will give us the grace to know how to pray and get answers speedily in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. God bless you joining us this morning once again. I'll be expecting you on Monday. Don't forget tomorrow, Sunday, don't miss the church. Yeah? If you are in the place of work or you are in the, you know, or you are in emergency anywhere, you can also see link up. Don't say Deeper Life Bible Church live. But your church, don't miss it. Any church you are attending, make sure you are there. And God will make you a blessing in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.